The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Retired General Paul Valley is on the telephone uh, for this segment of the program, and I've, I've asked uh, General Valley to come on the program to discuss uh, several issues, uh, I- including the continuing controversy about the identity of the man in the White House and also about the rapidly changing landscape uh, in the Middle East and uh, where we're going and how this could affect all of us. Uh, General Valley, welcome back to True News. Well, thank you, Rick. Appreciate the uh, invitation. Yes, sir. Uh, l- let's start, uh, before we get into the Middle East, let's start about, uh, let's talk about uh, what's, you know, the latest um, uh, claim by the White House to be Barack Obama's uh, identity. We all know, you know, the White House came up with a digital image. Uh, the media quickly declared the the issue dead. They said, there it is. There is the birth certificate. But I'll tell you, on my end, within hours, I had people emailing me who are digital, graphic digital artists and computer uh, uh, IT people, and they were quickly dissecting this thing, saying, look, this thing is this thing is made of multiple digital images. And, uh, you know, I, I had uh, Paul Irie on the program last week, who is a retired uh, graphics uh, artist uh, businessman who owned a company, an advertising agency for uh, many years in New Jersey, uh, uh, you know, an expert in, in typography. And he said this is absolutely a forgery. He said he would be willing to go into court as an expert witness and, and uh, testify under oath that the document put on the White House website is a forgery. General, what are your thoughts about this? Well, when they came out with the certificate of long birth, uh, you know, and they said, well, we're going to put this to rest now that this is a verification of uh, Obama's birth record. Well, uh, within about 48 hours, I received some information from some analysts who had gone over the document, and they said it's basically a layered document, and it is a forgery uh, that the White House did not really present the original birth certificate, which no one can find or nobody will uh, uh, expose, even from the Capiolani, uh, Capiolani uh, Hospital in Honolulu. So it, it raises questions uh, for a lot of us uh, that, uh, in fact, we don't have the original birth certificate. And all we want is the President of the United States to say, here is my documentation. Here is the real birth certificate and not a certificate of live birth, which is different. And in, in addition to that, all the other, other documents, that the millions of dollars, we understand, has been paid for to cover up not only his college records but other records of his background. And so, like uh, Jack Webb used to say, uh, Rick, many years ago, uh, in the TV program, Dragged Up, all we want are the facts, ma'am. That's right. Remember that? Oh, absolutely. So that's all America wants. We just want the facts, because uh, uh, more cover-up uh, in this administration uh, uh, leads to uh, a lack of credibility of our President of the United States, uh, not only internationally abroad, but uh, within uh, the, the borders of the United States. And we just feel there's so much corruption and cover-up going on in Washington, and we don't have courageous members of Congress, for the most part, or the judicial system standing up and trying to get the facts to America. Now, Americans uh, probably say, well, it's okay, no problem. But when you look also at Article 2 of the Constitution, a uh, natural-born clause in there, then that's become suspect. So that's where we're at on it at, uh, at our project in Stand Up America. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had several private investigators on the program who have categorically stated on the air that their investigation of Barack Obama has revealed that he uses a Social Security number that was issued to a person who lived in the state of Connecticut and most likely born in 1890. Um, Correct. And I've seen I've seen the printouts. I've a, I actually have the copies right here in front of me. Printouts of, of Social Security databases, uh, with, you know, who, that private investigators have access to, and it states, you know, has the name of the Social Security number, the name of the person using it, and date of birth, and it says Barack Hussein Obama, date of birth, eighteen ninety. Now, General, listen, this is this is 
This is criminal well, fraud. This is identity fraud. What we have is potential fraud and potential treason going on in the country. And we have to, uh, as citizens, uh, stand up and uh, this has to be accountable. So that's what we're asking. Uh, let's put this to rest once for all. And we know the FBI will not take any action or the CIA to tear apart these layered documents that uh, many experts now know uh, are, in fact, forged documents. All right, these national intelligence and law enforcement agencies obviously know the document is a forgery. Why won't they investigate? Well, the reason I, uh, well, I'll say the reasons I've received from people I know in Washington, D.C., uh, an individual that's uh, in the Justice Department and from several members of Congress is they don't want to create a black backlash in the urban areas if we question uh, this first black uh, white American president, uh, and that's that's uh, that's how they think back in Washington. They don't want to create any kind of uh, questioning and determination of the facts. So, now well, how much of that is true, I don't know. That's just feedback I'm getting out of Washington. So, so and for my if, part, if, I'm not afraid of any black uh, backlash at all. I think many blacks would like to know if we have a legitimate president, and so I think that's just. Uh, some kind of a myth that they want to portray uh, from Washington, D.C. to take no action. Okay, so we have one of two uh, possibilities underway. I, either federal agencies are aware of what, that, that Obama has serious identification problems and they are covering up for various reasons. Some of them may be, as you say, because they fear uh, there would there would be riots, social unrest if if, if Obama was exposed as a fraud, um, or the other option is they are complicit. They're part of this thing. I mean, either way, it's not good. That's correct. Well, there's a lot of complicity back there. Complicity in the financial uh, uh, outgoing or uh, programs. Uh, stimulus programs, all of these different bailouts, uh, there seems to be a, just a threat of corruption that goes all the way from Wall Street to serve certain corporate leaders uh, uh, throughout the executive branch and even throughout Congress. So uh, we've got a very si- serious situation here in America that we've got to resolve or else we're going to continue to go over the cliff. I, I'm, God bless you. We have to save this country. I'm looking right now online at, at the... Um online definition of a banana republic and it says uh, a country ruled by a small self-elected wealthy corrupt politico economic plutocracy that's that's starting to sound like us I well, mean, it is isn't it uh, and you know the uh, the corruption uh, and the autocratic form of governments and uh, Obama bypassing the War Powers Act by uh, this continuation of supporting uh, uh, NATO uh, uh, in Libya is a good example. But I think this White House thinks they're above the law. And the War Powers Act of 1973 doesn't apply. And uh, the other bypasses they're doing in the White House and uh, suggesting that the president take and make executive orders that basically bypass our legislative judicial system. Look at the scandal with the ATF. Our federal government was was literally providing high-powered rifles and guns to to drug dealers in Mexico. Thousands yeah, of them. Fast and furious operation. Yes, that's correct. But but if you and I oh, did that, just one mistake after the other. We look at our policy. Uh, guidance uh, and continuing to pour money into the Middle East, which is nothing but a gigantic sponge that's uh, just soaking up the human and financial resources of the United States. And we know, in fact, that Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood, that's one of their objectives. How did Great American bring it down? And they're very smart at doing this uh, in terms of uh, creating situations that draw us in further into the Middle East. Uh, General, the, the Arab uprising that started in Egypt, was this spontaneous or is it the result of careful planning and the training of in, uh, of activists over several years. What do you think is happening here in the Middle East? Well, I think it's a combination of things. I, I think you do see the young over there that are tired of tyrannical governments. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, these uh, younger people in their 20s and 30s, they're on Facebook, uh, they're on the Internet. Uh, they do want uh, some form of uh, freedom and liberty. Uh, so you have that element, and I think that does exist. So when you add on to it, then the global caliphate and the, uh, the support of the global caliphate coming out of uh, Iran with uh, Saudi Arabia still supporting that, that uh, we only have one country in the Middle East, as uh, Bibi Netanyahu said, uh, the only thing good about the Middle East now is Israel because they stand for freedom and democracy and a good capitalist system. Uh, I don't know whether people realize, but uh, last year Israel was ranked the number one high-tech uh, country in the, in the world. So things are good. They're creating jobs, but that's not happening uh, with the rest of the Middle East. So you're going to continue to see uh, uh, the unrest uh, in uh, Syria and southern Lebanon, and they're, they're out to bring these uh, dictators down. And certainly who's there to fill the void? Well, Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda. So, and that's what uh, Saudi Arabia is very fearful of, that the, uh, the uh, royal family uh, is going to be uh, basically brought down. So uh, uh, my feeling is, unless it's a direct threat to the United States other than Iran, that uh, we need to stay out of it, and we cannot afford any more human and financial resources going into the Middle East. Uh, General, why are we bombing NATO? I mean, why is NATO bombing Libya? What is this? I, I mean, this thing started months ago as enforcing a no-fly zone because uh, we were told Gaddafi was roughing up demonstrators in the street and we wanted to prevent uh, civilians from being hurt. This has gone now into a full-scale war. We're bombing the Libyan government and we're trying to kill Gaddafi and thousands of civilians have been hurt and killed uh, by both sides in the fighting. W what's going on? Well, uh, you had the uprising uh, that uh, took place in uh, Tunisia where it first started, spreading, uh, of course, to Egypt, uh, then to Libya, to uh, Yemen, uh, to, um, to Syria. So you have a, a, a boiling uh, pot over there going on for a number of different reasons. That's why we don't want to be drug into it. They've got to solve their own problems. We must support Israel over there as best we can. That's the most important country that we have to support there. Um, so from that standpoint, uh, uh, we need a new strategy in America, and that's why I've been uh, uh, proposing, uh, and I did it with President Bush and his uh, uh, members of the Department of Defense, we need to go to a unconventional warfare uh, strategy, what I call the Joint uh, Force uh, uh, Strike Force Operations, the lily pad where we basically strike the enemy based on good intelligence and re return home, and no more nation building. Uh, we've actually ranked now uh, our top threats in America, as we look at it at our organization, Stand Up America, is the number one threat to America now is financial collapse. So we have got to ensure that we do everything to prevent that. The second uh, major threat to America are our borders, and particularly the southern border. The third threat are... Iran and their proxies. Uh, they're creating uh, all the problems for the most part in the Middle East and throughout the world. They're in big time into Venezuela with Chavez. So that ties into the southern border uh, threat. And then, of course, the fourth threat that we see are the uh, uh, training areas, training centers for al-Qaeda in Yemen and Somalia. So when you look at the fifth, there's Afghanistan and Pakistan in our, in our ladder of threats there. They're, they're number fifth. But we cannot afford to go on with this nation building. Uh, we've got to use our armed forces uh, as best we can to protect America, and we've got to put America first back on the uh, program here. Uh, we are wearing out our fighting men. What, what are you hearing from your fellow officers in, in the military about, about the stress uh, that we're putting on our, our our armed forces? Well, it is. It's a lot of stress and the multiple deployments, uh, morale. Uh, I visited four soldiers uh, at Walter Reed Hospital last month who had just been evacuated out of Afghanistan. The two of them lost their legs below the knee. Uh, one of them was blinded in a high-value special operations operation. And a fourth uh, was a... Uh, explosive ordnance disposal individual that uh, got blown up by an IED. 
but uh, the rules of engagement uh, that we've placed on our soldiers uh, uh, over in Afghanistan, a, a really a failed uh, nation-building policy, a very corrupt policy, and government over there. So the whole thing, we need to change our strategy today, but I'm afraid we don't have the leadership in Washington that's going to do it. What are you hearing from military officers about the um indoctrination of homosexuality in the Marine Corps and, and all the all the branches of the military. These uh, 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 homosexuality sensitivity classes uh-huh. have been underway all summer. You can add to that one yourself. Uh, you know, it's another way to do social experimenting in our military, and that's not what it's for. So uh, uh, wasting time on that rather than uh, taking the time to focus on uh, our border security and protecting America and all these other social issues. The Armed Forces does not need to be involved in these. Uh, General, uh, the last time you were on the program, uh, um, which was last year, uh, we were talking about the plans of Stand Up America. You said that the organization was going to search out um, a patriotic leader to run for president of the United States. You, You had a criteria of what you were looking for, someone who had... A business executive experience and military experience, somebody who had never been right. in public office. Have you succeeded in finding that person? No, we have not. We're still looking. Uh, we're still looking for that George Washington uh, right out of the forest on his white horse, and uh, I'm not satisfied with any of the candidates right now, uh, but uh, we're hoping that uh, somebody will rise to the top here and we can put uh, a really good chief executive in charge of our government as well as good people in Congress. And, and, and what are some of the plans for Stand Up America for this year? Well, our plans, we've just initiated the national call to action for all Americans to stand up. Let's get back to our Constitution. Let's get back to our values and traditions. And let's rid uh, federal government and state government of all these politicians that are putting themselves first and their party first uh, and not standing up for uh, the American citizen and for uh, the Constitution. So, well, I appreciate you asking me on today. Yes, sir. I, yes, sir, and I, I appreciate your, your time. I know you're traveling. Uh, my uh, guest today, retired General Paul Valley. Sir, appreciate you coming on the program. God bless you. Well, God bless you, and we'll look forward to it, doing it again. All right. I'm Rick Wiles. Let's take a quick break. I'll be back in a minute with the rest of the program. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. You're listening to True News, the end time newscast. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. 